Hey team Bio, welcome to your screencast, an introduction to water molecules. Um, we are diving into the biochemistry of living systems, and we're going to talk a lot about how the structure of um, the smallest things inform their function. Um, so the relationship between structure and function of uh, lots of tiny up to large molecules and organelles, cells, organs, organ systems. Um, it's going to be a theme studying how structure informs function and vice versa. Um, okay, so we're diving into a biochemistry unit. And one of the first definitions is important for you to know is the definition of an organic molecule. Um, the biological use of the word organic is different from the colloquial grocery store use of organic. So um, when we're talking about something organic in biology class, we mean that it contains carbon, carbon, bonds, or it contains carbon, hydrogen bonds. So, um, or I guess I should say it contains carbon, um, two carbon atoms that are covalently bonded to one another. So this would be a covalent bond. More on that later. Or it contains carbon, a carbon atom bonded to a hydrogen atom, which would also be a covalent bond. Okay, so organic compounds, um, organic molecules contain carbon-carbon bonds that are, or carbon-carbon atoms that are covalently bonded or carbon-hydrogen atoms that are covalently bonded. Um, so if we look at the thing that we're talking about today, which is water, we see it has oxygen and hydrogen. Um, so it is an inorganic compound. Um, okay, so USDA or grocery store organic, not the same as biology class organic. Okay, water is what we call a polar molecule. And um, water is polar because the two sides of, or kind of the three sides of the water molecule um, have different charges. Okay, let's talk about what this structure means. These two lines here that are connecting the hydrogen to the oxygen here and here, this represents a covalent bond. Uh, where's my black pen? Oh, okay. This is a covalent bond. bond. Maybe I should make my these red so you know it's different than the okay. Um, when so a, a bond between two um, atoms represents some sort of system of sharing electrons um, or giving away electrons. So in covalent bonds um, the Electrons in the outer shell of the two atoms are being shared between um, the, the atoms that are bonded with one another. So this little line actually represents two dots, which are or two electrons, which I'm going to draw here as two dots. Um, and these electrons are orbiting around um, the two atoms that they are shared with, um, but they're actually not shared equally in this bond between hydrogen and oxygen. Oxygen pulls on them more strongly. It has what's called more electronegativity. So these, um, the, the two uh, electrons that are represented by this bond as well are closer to the oxygen than they are to the hydrogen. Um, Electronegativity has a trend across the periodic table, and it is increasing as you move this way across the table, and it is increasing as you go up the periodic table. Um, so the most electronegative element on the table is um, fluorine. Uh, 
And so I guess it stops with the noble gases. So I should say, I should make this a little bit like this. Okay. So fluorine is the most electronegative elements. Um, so as you're moving this way across the periodic table, um, the uh, nucleus is getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, but we have not yet created a new orbital or kind of a new shell of where the electrons can be. So um, the nucleus is able to pull more and more strongly along on the electrons that are orbiting it, um, but they're no further away from the nucleus. As we move down um, in the periodic table, we enter a new electron orbital. And so um, even though electronegativity is increasing as we move this direction, it's actually uh, because the nucleus is still getting bigger and the proton number is increasing as we move across this direction. Um, the electrons are further away from the nucleus uh, in chlorine than they are in fluorine. So it's harder for the nucleus, the protons in the nucleus, to pull on them. Okay, what matters between when determining um, electro, uh, whether or not a bond will be a polar bond is the electronegativity difference between two elements. Um, so oxygen is more electron, electronegative than hydrogen and the difference is significant. So this means that oxygen, when it's bonded with hydrogen, will always have a slightly, I'm gonna put this in blue again, it will have a slightly negative charge and hydrogens will have a slightly positive charge because the oxygen is pulling on these shared electrons. Um, so this leaves hydrogen with a delta positive and oxygen with a delta negative. Now, um, carbon is slightly more electronegative than hydrogen, but not enough to make a difference in their shared um, electrons. So if we look at the structure of methane, we can see that it is nonpolar because the electrons that are represented by all of these bonds, these covalent bonds, again, this is all, these are all covalent bonds. All of these electrons are shared equally between methane or between carbon and um, hydrogen. Um, okay, and methane is an example of an organic molecule because it contains carbon hydrogen bonds. Um, okay, so uh, water is a polar molecule, it has a negative side and then two positive sides. And this leads to some interesting behaviors as it starts to interact with other molecules of water um, as well as other polar or nonpolar things. So when we have a bunch of water molecules all aggregated together in a liquid, um, we see uh, bonds forming um, between different molecules of water. Um, so uh, I guess I should define this first. So an intramolecular bond is going to be a force or a bond within a molecule. So for example, um, this polar covalent bond holding this hydrogen to this oxygen is an intramolecular bond. Um, intermolecular bonds are forces between different molecules. Um, so how I remember this is that the interstate is a highway that connects um, many states together. Um, or intramural sports are sports played within one school. But uh, interscholastic sports are played across multiple schools. Um, okay, so this polar covalent bond holding this hydrogen to this oxygen is an example of an intramolecular bond. Um, but because uh, water is a polar molecule and this uh, 
oxygen has a slightly negative charge and the hydrogen of another water molecule has a slightly negative charge, we start to see a transient, that means short-lived connection between this oxygen and this hydrogen. And this is what's called a hydrogen bond. So this bond here So at room temperature, um, in a glass of water, this hydrogen bond might form, and then instants later it might break, and then it might reform again, and then it might break again, and then it might form a different hydrogen bond with another molecule of water, and then that would break and then reform. So these hydrogen bonds, um, when water is liquid, are breaking and reforming all the time. When water is in a vapor, in a gas, um, then the hydrogen bonds are completely broken. And when uh, the water is become ice, then these hydrogen bonds form a crystal lattice structure um, that give ice its structure, its less dense structure than liquid water. Um, so hydrogen bonds are happening across, um, between different molecules of water in liquid water all the time. They're breaking and reforming. And they're always between one negatively or slightly negatively charged oxygen of one molecule of water with the slightly positive charged um, end of uh, another molecule of water, the hydrogen side. Um, okay, so these are called hydrogen bonds. Um, and they're always breaking and reforming. They're an example of an intermolecular bond. Now, um, when water binds to other molecules of water, uh, just like we see here in this image, we call this cohesion. So this is water H bonding or hydrogen bonding to other molecules of water. But when water binds to some other polar molecule, so when water H bonds to some other type of molecule, we call this adhesion. So cohesion is water binding to water through hydrogen bonding, and adhesion is water binding to something else. Um, so these properties of water, the fact that water is a polar molecule, the electrons in these covalent bonds um, are not shared equally, leads to the fact that it has a negative side and a positive side. Um, and it leads to all these different interesting properties that water has. Um, it leads to surface tension. It leads to water being a fantastic solvent. So here's an example of a salt crystal that is dissolving in water. And it leads to water's capillarity, its ability to move up from the roots of a tree all the way up to the leaves um, passively without extending any energy. Um, so we're going to talk about these properties of water as well as a few more in class tomorrow, but it's important for you to know that all of water's um, interesting properties arise from its structure, specifically the fact that it is a polar molecule. It has a negative side or a slightly negative side and two slightly positive sides in comparison to nonpolar molecules that have no charged areas on them because there's an equal distribution of the electrons across the entire molecule. Okay, that's all.